So now the guy who doesn't talk at all, okay, so, yeah, this, right. this clown, quiet clown. Clown, clown. so what you have to do is, first of all, ask him to solve a problem, okay? What do you think about blah, blah, blah? Never ask him what does he feel, okay? And that's even for both sides. Don't ask men what they feel, okay, period. Ask him what he thinks. Give him a problem to solve. You know, I read in the paper the other day, so-and-so, so-and-so this. What do you think they should do? Or why do you think they do that? Or what do you think they should have done? Put men in the problem-solving mode and they'll talk. And maybe, you know, you don't really need that help in your life, but you're trying, what you're trying to do is get a conversation going here. And did you see that movie? You know, what did you think about it when so-and-so said this and this and this? You know, sometimes my wife and I just generate conversation because we're married 34 years and, you know, you've kind of had all your conversations. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, two things would happen. First of all, it was one, one is when we'd have guests over and then Bonnie would say, John, tell them about that. Tell them about that. So I could tell all my stories again. And she wasn't bored by it. But after you've told all your life story to your partner, you've had so much, what's there to talk about? So what Bonnie would do is we'd watch shows, we'd put it on pause, and she'd say, what do you think they should have done in that situation? What do you think she could have done in that situation? Well, how could they have resolved that? You see, put men in the problem-solving mode. And we did even another thing, which is I talk about how men, if you really understand men, you realize they, some men are exceptions, but they almost always make sense. Okay? That's their, their whole masculinity is about being logical and making sense with situations and so if you were if you were to uh to, to she was you know she would see me getting upset sometimes with the person's point of view in the news or whatever and she'd say oh josh tell me why you think that guy what he's doing is making sense why do you think that makes sense because i you have to come back to well it makes sense because if I believed X, Y, Z, then it would make sense to do, uh, if I believed A, B, C, then it would make sense to do X, Y, Z. You see, everything is logical if somebody's not being emotional. If somebody's being emotional, let's keep that in, in, in look at that side of it. It's uh, a lot of emotion means no logic. And a lot of logic means no emotion. And men are best when men are angry, upset, irritable, passive, grumpy, resistant, all the worst qualities of men. It's because they're not being logical. They're too emotional at those times. And we can measure that because their estrogen levels, estrogen goes up with emotions. And whenever women are not happy, they're having negative emotions. The logic they're using is wrong. We have to all recognize one of the most beautiful things we can do is not trust our feelings when we're <laughs> as being fully logical if if we're not feeling love and when you're feeling love you don't feel angry you don't feel sad you don't feel hurt you don't feel any of those things now you can love someone yes and feel sad like when bonnie died oh my god i've never two years of massive grief and sadness and disappointment yesterday was actually the anniversary of her death and it was a hard day for me and uh, very very painful but when you're feeling pain it's not that i don't love her but in that moment, I wasn't feeling love. You see, it's kind of like remembering love. It's lo I love you so much, but you're not here. It's there's a pain associated with, as opposed to coming back to gratitude, love that she's in my life. That you know, I have a beautiful life now, and I know she's in my belief system. She's moved on to another world. She's happier there, and she's looking over our family. You know, so see, that's love. See, love is peaceful. Love is open. Love is accepting. And when we love someone and we lose them, then, you know, we, 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 we're feeling all these negative emotions. There's love there too, or you wouldn't have those negative emotions, but you're not fully feeling the love. So let's come back to fully feeling the love and not buying into these negative emotions. And of course, the negative emotion that really, if I analyze the pain I feel is that I failed her in some way. If I'd been a better husband, she wouldn't have died. You know, no, I had nothing to do with her death. It was cancer. But, you know, there's that place where you, if only I'd been better. You know, another one is a fear, you know, I'll never find love again. That's what the brain goes into. Another fear is I'll always feel pain. These are all lies. But if I have the feeling, the, if I feel afraid, I'll always feel this way, pain, then that's my fear. 
then I, I'll, I'll continue to be in pain because I'm living in fear. All negative emotions are pain. So we have to know wisdom is so important to know that pain is healed through love. We have to feel our emotions and let them go, but we can only let them go by recognizing they're not true. The logic in them is faulty in some way. Okay, well, that's a little extra thought on that one. So I come back to the basic question you asked, which is he doesn't talk. You need to ask him questions, get him in touch with solving problems, activate that logical mind inside of him. And then he will share more. Then he'll really get into it. Then you want to stop him so you can talk more and he gets to know you, okay?